news. Kogi APC supporters group stage solidarity work to support Ahmed Ododo and Joel Salifu. The Lagos state government sets up shelters for domestic and sexual violence survivors. Attempted armed mutiny in Russia shows real cracks in President Putin's authority, says Antony Blinken. And on sports, China's Ronin Yin wins the Women's PGA Championship with a 72nd hole body to claim her first major title. This is the MLC TV Global News, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the Confluence state of Nigeria. I am Jane Balagbubo. Good day and welcome to today's news. Kogi State Governor Yahaya Bello said he wants to be remembered as a dogged leader who means well for the well-being of the citizenry of the state. Governor Yahaya Bello said this at GYB's maiden essay writing competition for the state correspondence, which was held in the Glass House Government House, Lokoja, the state capital. The competition has the Sun newspaper correspondent Emmanuel Adeyemi as the winner. Richard Elesho of the News and Julius Atabo of the Daily Independent emerged first. Our reporter, Faith Abdugafar, has more. We have one special one among us. The journalist that is on crutch, crutches. His name is Musa Aminu. Ishad. Go. He, you have two wives, you have eight children. Am I right? Yourself, your two wives, and your eight children are hereby automatically enrolled in the Kogi State Health Insurance Scheme. Governor Yaya Bello said his success in the past years of his administration wouldn't have made possible without the constructive criticism of the media. I appreciate all of you. Mr. President, sir, these are my own. If you don't develop your own, who will develop them? But a bit late. But it's better late than now. And what's important is these particular events have been institutionalized. <laughs> By the grace of God, it will outlive GYB's administration. Governor Bello, why presenting the award to the winners? said that the award is to honor journalists who have been supported by promoting government activities. Our time is winding up. All I want to be remembered for is that leader who was determined, dogged in fighting for his people, and who provided visionary leadership for his people. And at the end of the day, I would have been satisfied that looking backward, this was where I met the state, and this is where I was able to hand over the state to my successor, and by the special grace of God, Ahmed Usman Urudu. And for me to accomplish my mission, it would be possible without the media, the fourth estate of the realm. You have made me to pass through the blast furnace, and we are coming out more refined. The national president of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Chris Uziguzo, appreciated the governor for organizing the easy competition to encourage journalists in the state. He also commended the media consultant Yemi Kolakbo for the firm handling of all state government media related matters. I stand before you here today uh, filled with immense pride and admiration for the incredible talent and dedication demonstrated by all the participants in this uh, GYBSA competition for journalists in Gogi States. 
These competition serves as a testament to the vital role journalists play in our society. Your relentless pursuit of truth, commitment to delivering accurate information, and unwavering dedication to upholding journalistic ethics are indeed commendable. I, in a very special way, extend my heartfelt congratulations to the winners of this prestigious uh, competition. Your outstanding work uh, showcases the power of journalism in shedding light on critical issues, promoting transparency, and inspiring positive change within our society. Your stories have the ability to shape public opinion and influence policy decisions, making you catalysts for progress. I would also like to indeed express my profound gratitude to His Excellency the Governor of Kogi State, Governor Yaya Bello, for his unwavering support of journalism and his recognition of its importance in building a better Kogi State. By establishing this competition, Your Excellency, you have indeed demonstrated a commitment to nurturing and empowering journalists to excel in their craft. We cannot continue to cover pregnancy. It must shoot out somehow. You know? So in a very special way, I must have to, on their behalf, extend our profound gratitude, appreciation to my beloved friend and sister, Yemi Kolak. She has, she has indeed brought her mastery, you know, of uh, media strategy and consultancy to bear in the way and manner she has driven media affairs of these states. And the journalists are testifying to that. The State Commissioner for Information and Communications, Kingsley Fang, will thank Governor Bello's effort for the uncommon competition and thanks the Governor for his many projects executed across the three senatorial districts. Journalists are the best in the society, but that is not to say they don't do wrong. They do wrong. At times it is not intentional, at times it is intentional. For you to make them do what you want them to do and for them to support the society, the society must also do everything to support them to be at their best. Three years ago, the GYB administration initiated a training, a seminar for journalists reporting crime and politics in Abuja, well attended. Last year, it was also celebrated in Abuja this year, we've not done that big one, but we've done the small one in Kogi State to ensure that we celebrate journalists that know their audience. And that is why we initiated a GYB essay competition for journalists to write about the achievement of His Excellency in the last seven years. That has been looked into by a panel of judges led by Tunde M. Akoni, PhD, Associate Professor, Department of Journalism, School of Communication, Lagos State University. Also, we have on that panel, Eddie Oduri, member editorial board of these day newspapers. We also have Ayola Uleshi, editor-in-chief, the news matrix. We also have Gabriel Aki Adeo, MD Editor in Chief Freedom Online Assistant General Secretary, Nigerian Guild of Editors. We also have Abimbola Oye Tunde, General Manager, Deputy Director News Radio Nigeria, Bronze FM, Benin City. These people have done justice to the different essays that we will publish in the next few weeks in the national dailies to celebrate. A man who came to change Kogi State, a man who has rewritten the history of the state, the architect of modern Kogi State, a man who turned a crime-infested state into one of the safest states in the country today, a man who has redefined healthcare delivery 
not only by building the best hospitals in the country. When I say the best hospitals in the country, I mean the best hospitals in the country because the facilities we have in some of these hospitals are debuting for the first time in Africa, in the entire African continent. He's not just doing this, he's also ensuring that we are able to make it affordable for the people by launching a robust and one of the best health insurance scheme in the country today. He has also ensured that for the first time in the history of the state, despite having so many governors, we now have a flyover bridge in Lokoja City. Under his leadership, Lokoja became one of the fastest growing cities in the world. It was not said by the Kogi State, it was said by a globally recognized organization. Not only that, some of the best schools in Nigeria today, GYB model schools, are scattered across the state, and that is to signpost his determination to ensure that education, which is the driver of the society, is pushed forward. He urged journalists to continue to promote the activities of the government and the winners emerge. <laughs> The star winner Emmanuel Adeyemi of the Sun newspaper goes home with two million era. I don't know how to thank you all, but I know God Almighty will continue to protect you. Whatever you lay your hand upon, God will continue to prosper you in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you on behalf of others for what you have done for us. In fact, it's an eye opener and it's an encouragement for us in Bogi. In the time past, in the time past, we have not seen this kind of thing. But we thank you, Lord. We thank you uh, that God has used you, you know, to do this thing for us. And we are very, very excited. Richard Elosho of the news magazine came second and went home with one million naira. And Atabo Gilios of Delhi Independent came third with 500,000 naira and two won 250,000 naira each. Faith Abdugafa reporting for MSC TV. Kogi State Governor Yahaya Bello has signed into law a bill for state establishment of Kogi State University, Kaba, and a bill to repeal the prohibition of kidnapping and other related offenses law 2015 and to reenact the Kogi State prohibition of kidnapping and other related matters 2023 after both bills were passed by the Kogi State House of Assembly. Governor Bello, who signed the bills at the ESCO Hall in Government House, Lokoja, said the two bills now assented to laws will have positive impact on the people of the state. Our reporter has the detail. A cited Governor Bello expressed fulfillment to have the university approved for take-up during his administration, saying it is a symbol of a good representation of equity, fairness and justice across the three senatorial districts. This is a generational ambition, an age-long ambition of the people of Okulan, Kogi West, and co-guides generally. I read it in history that Pa S.B. Awani pursued and labored so much as some other prominent sons and daughters from that extraction, especially from Kogi West, for the establishment of a university, and but never see the light of the day. I thank God that it's under my own term my own time, under my watch, in our own time, we were able to establish the university <laughs> in Kaba. Kogi is how one state university, Kogi Central how one state university, and Kogi West now have a state university. <laughs> this is fairness, equity, and justice. He said it will provide the opportunity for more young students who seek higher learning to get admission. Education is what all of us need. 
any generation or any society wants to lift herself from poverty, the best way to go is education. We have our sons and daughters or children that have been laboring for admission in various other universities, but never see the light of the day. With this, we know and very confident that our daughters will not suffer for admission again. And you know that we don't take education lightly in Kogi State. Ever since I came on board, I inherited some months old strike. I will resolve the matter several years down the line. We have not had such incident again. Thank you, sir. In this our second term, we established Conference University of Science and Technology in Osara. And again, we are establishing another one now. Governor Bello appreciated the eight assembly members for their quick response in the process of the passage of the bills and said any generation that wants to overcome poverty must make education its priority. Why the governor confirmed the readiness of every required document for the approval of the National University Commission. He promised that before the end of his tenure, Kogi State University Kaba will matriculate its first set of intakes. I thank all of you for your cooperation and understanding. And uh, before we wind up from this administration, by the grace of God, the first set of students in this new university shall matriculate before we wind up. Governor Bello similarly revealed that the College of Education Technical Kaba will be relocated to Yaba East local government area to create room for the new university. Commenting on the reenactment of Kogi prohibition of kidnapping and other related matters in 2023, the governor said that no society could prosper or achieve social economic growth without adequate security and guaranteeing citizens' safety. He said the newly reenacted law is intended to get rid of crimes and criminals that are still living in every look and cranny of the state. Assured that Kogi State under his watch will remain committed to a zero tolerance policy for crimes, criminals and their sponsors. He promised no hideouts for criminals in the state. So we want to as much as possible get rid of every crime and criminalities that are living amongst us. Today we have a law that has repealed and the, the prohibition of kidnapping and other related offenses law 2015. And we have reenacted the same law for Kogi State prohibition of kidnapping and other related matters 2023. This is another very strong legislation whereby no kidnapper whatsoever or any other related offenses, whether kidnapping, toggery, armed robbery, and several other related matters that shall be condoned in Kogi State. We will route out criminals from their hideout. This is a riot act. And this has come into effect immediately. Kogi State House of Assembly Speaker Aliu Omar Yusuf expressed the expedition of the legislative process, particularly with the regards to the law establishing Kogi State University Kaba, was a reaction to the yearnings and aspiration of the people of the region. Opening, particularly Kogi West, has been the brain boss of northern Nigeria. And after more than 60, 70 years of existence, the no boss of any higher institution. And given the fact that the two senatorial districts have a higher institution, so the pressure has been mounting. So we reacted to the need of the people promptly without wasting time. The speaker concluded that the east and central districts of the state have their separate higher institutions. Hence, the people of Kogi West wanted a similar institution. This prompted the bill to receive a quick attention, speedy consideration, and passage by the state legislature. The university will be the second established by the administration of Governor Yaya Bello in the state. 
I am Faith Abdul Ghaffar reporting for MSC TV. The Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, has mobilized 925 personnel, 25 patrol vehicles, four ambulances, and towing trucks on highways for an accident free Sala celebration in Kogi State. Corps Commander Stephen Dawulong, the Kogi FRSC sector commander, who disclosed in a statement issued in Lokoja on Sunday, said the special patrol became imperative due to the recklessness of some motorists during festivities like Salah. Dawulong said that the officials deployed comprises well-trained regular and special marshals that were equipped with Red alizers and other surveillance equipment to keep watch over traffic on the highways. This deployment is in line with the mandate to ensure free and safe vehicular movement within and across the state during the Salah holiday. The sector commander disclosed some strategies to be deployed to achieve the desired objectives of the special patrol, including robust public enlightenment, enforcement against critical offenses clearance of obstructions and traffic control. Daulong advised motorists to always adhere to road traffic regulations, exhibit the highest level of caution and discipline, and avoid any unwholesome practices such as speeding and overloading. While wishing travelers a fruitful Ed Il Kabil celebration, he reminded them that safety was key as only the living celebrate. The Lagos State Government, through its Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency, has set up a shelter for domestic violence survivors. The spokesperson of the agency, Joke Ladenegang Ogini, revealed this in a statement on Sunday. Speaking at the opening of the shelter at Ikorodu, the Executive Secretary of the Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency, Titilola Vivo Adeni, stated that the open haven, a 30-bed space capacity building, was erected to provide immediate shelter services to high-risk survivors of domestic violence. She said the opening of the shelter is the state government's prompt response to the burgeoning demand to ensure the preservation of life, safety, stability, empowerment, and subsequently the reintegration of survivors back into society. Vivo Adeni also noted that the government would, through this intervention, provide other forms of support, adding that the shelter is at a confidential location with strong security. She assured victims and survivors of domestic violence that they are not alone and that there is help accessible. And on politics, Kogi State Governor Yahaya Bello has welcomed Joseph Eriko, a former PDP stalwart and governorship aspirant, to his residence in Abuja on Sunday. The governor, accompanied by his deputy Edward Onoja and APC governorship candidate Ododo Ahmed Usman, expressed his gratitude for Eriko's commendation of his development initiatives in the state. During the warm reception, Governor Bello emphasized the unity of Kogi State and encouraged its residents to foster a spirit of brotherhood for the state's progress. He called for collaboration among the people, highlighting that the continuity of APC leadership in Kogi State would safeguard and promote the state's interest at the federal level. The PDP governorship aspirant Eriko praised Governor Baylor's administration for its investments in education, health care, rural development and road infrastructure. He specifically acknowledged the rehabilitation of the Ibana Okpo Ikeja Ogugu Road and other projects in Olamabo local government area. Eriko assured Governor Bello of his support, expressing his belief that it would contribute to the growth and development of the state. Hundreds of youth support groups and party faithful within and outside Kogi State capital, Lokoja, on Saturday staged a solidarity work to drum support for the election bid of candidates of the All Progressive Congress APC, Ododo Ahmed Usman and Joel Oyibo. The solidarity work also was to appreciate the sitting governor, Yahya Bello, for supporting the election of Usman Ododo as the party candidate. The group's leader, Yakubu Adabenega, called supporters of Ododo Ahmed to get their PVCs ready to vote for the continuation of adequate security, infrastructure, improved health facilities, and social development across the state. Our reporter tells us more. <laughs> Thank you.
The team leaders Yakub Adabenigi and Barrister Zachary Abbas said their support for Usman Ododo and Joa Oibo is not because they are perfect. It is because of their past antecedents and impactful track records and as people who had participated in gains and achievements of the present administration. They thank Governor Bello for supporting the APC candidature, Usma Ododo and his running mate, saying as a governor he has achieved so much in all economic sectors, security and infrastructure, ensuring that they do not doubt their capacity to deliver on their mandate if Ododo is elected the next governor of the state. Ada Benege urged all supporters to get their PVC ready to cast their votes in the coming governorship election. It didn't mean fit that we do use, we can succeed in. For him to have that zeal, for him to have that decision, to choose his successor as a youth, that's why we decided to take up this work. To say, His Excellency, I like that, Abelo, thank you. And I want to beg you that, please and please, everybody knows the Joker. What is the Joker? The BBC. The Joker is the BBC. I want to beg everybody, please. Go back home, arrange your PVC, and make sure you keep it safe till November level. Everybody go back to their wall. Go back to your body. Make sure you come back. Make sure you come out to Mars. We don't want to go to the party. What do you want to have? You come out to Mars. Let's support our family. Let's support our family. Let's support His Excellency, Governor Yaya Bala Bebe. Key leaders in Jinabako Ibrahim, Abisoye, Dupe, and James Paul, who spoke to journalists, described the APC governorship candidate, Usma Ododo, as a man of peace, dependable, detravelized, youth and women-friendly leader. We, we strongly believe with the, with the love and passion he has for Kogi State, he's going to do the unexpected, he's going to continue the legacy of His Excellency Alhaji and those are here. APC party stalwart Abiba Tidani, who also led the youth and women, said the candidates of the ruling party have the technical know how and necessary credentials required to run a smooth government and sustainable administration. She expressed satisfaction with the turnout, which she described as a sign of victory for the party and the governorship candidates. The Thank You Solidarity Award for Governor Bello and call for support of Osma Ododo attracted hundreds of supporters and party faithful who defied the rain. They started from Zone 8 Lokoja and ended at Obasanjo Square, a more than two hours walk. I am Faith Abdugafa, reporting for MSC TV. We go on a short break, we'll be right back. Malachi TV Online is here for your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news. Choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone.
Welcome back. And on foreign, soldiers have surrounded the headquarters of the main opposition party in Sierra Leone as votes are counted in the country's presidential election. The leader of the All People's Congress, Samura Kamara, said live ammunition was fired into the building as he held a news conference. He said it amounted to an assassination attempt. Clouds of tear gas shrouded the building. It is unclear why truckloads of troops were deployed. The police have not yet commented on the incident. The opposition is hoping to unseat President Julius Madabio who's standing for a second term in office. There was sporadic violence against election officials during the vote on Saturday after a tense campaign. An attempted armed mutiny in Russia shows real cracks in President Vladimir Putin's authority. America's top diplomat, Antony Blinken, has said. He told the United States media that the rebellion by Yegini, Prigozhin's Wagner fighters, was a direct challenge to Putin forcing him into an amnesty agreement. The deal halted Wagner's march on Moscow on Saturday. The machineries had earlier seized two Russian cities. Putin accused the group of treason, but all charges were later dropped. Under the deal, Wagner fighters must return to their field bases and Prigozhin move to Russia's western neighbor, Belarus. Meanwhile, President Putin has not been seen in public since his nationwide TV address on Saturday morning to condemn the Mutini. On Sunday, Blinken told CBS, the BBC's U.S. news partner, that the 24-hour rebellion in Russia raises profound questions. It shows real cracks. Blinken, the United States diplomat, added that he did not want to speculate on where this all could lead Russia and President Putin personally. Russia has not publicly commented on Blinken's remarks. And on sports, let's join Jonah Malik for the sport of Hello and a very warm welcome to Sports Update on MLC TV Global News. China's winning Jin held a nerve to sink a 72nd hole bad eye and win the Women's PGA Championship. The 20-year-old was level with Japan's Yuka Sasso on 7 under heading to the par 5 18th on Sunday. Yin calmly rode in the fourth bad eye of her final round to seal her first major title in New Jersey. She shot a bogey free 67 to finish 8 under 276 overall with Sasso a short back in second after she carded a final round 66. Still on sport and moving down to Africa, Rivers United Liberian forward Albert Kova scored twice and Okon Inibong scored a stunner for Bender Insurance in a thrilling Ninja Super 8 South-South zonal elimination game which ended 3-2 in favor of Rivers United in Eket on Sunday. Perhaps saving the best for the last, the final game of the series didn't disappoint with five goals in a frenetic end-to-end -end contest between the two representatives of Nigeria in next season's CAF Confederations Cup. However, a stoppage time penalty by Maurice Chuku gave the 2022 MPFL champions the edge. Earlier, Northwest rivals Kano Pillars and Castina United renewed their rivalry in the first game on Sunday, and it was the Castina side who edged the game one goes to nothing. As a result, Castina United are the second NNF side to have qualified for the main tournament, joining Jobe Desert Stars, who defeated Gombe United two goes to one on Saturday. Lobby Stars, Remo Stars, Ayimba, Jobe Desert Stars, Castilla United and Rivers United are the six winners of the playoffs ahead of the money spinning tournament. The draw for the main tournament will be held Thursday and the two wildcard team that will complete the Super 8 will also be revealed while the main competition will be held at the Mobology Johnson Arena in Lagos from July 7th to 16th. And that's all on Sports Update. I am Jonah Malik reporting back to Acasta for more stories. Jonah for the sports update and over to Joy Dada to take us through the latest on the world of entertainment.
Welcome to entertainment segment. I am Joy Dada. In Africa, on June 26, 2023, the 2023 BET Awards was held, and this edition celebrated 50 years of hip hop with memorable performances from rap legends, including KRS1, Big Daddy, and Fat Joe. Nigerian megastar Davido performed at the show where he treated the audience with his new smash hit single, Unavailable thereby being the second year in a role an Afrobeat artist will be performing at the main event following Fireboy performance last year. Bonaboy won the Best International Art White Times won the award for Best Collaboration for the second year in a row for his contributions to Features, Wait For You. And on foreign scene, three days after five people died in a titan submersible implosion, YouTuber Mr. B said he's previously turned down an invite on a titanic submarine. In the wake of the Titan submersible tragedy, YouTuber Mr. B said he passed on a chance to ride in a sub making the same voyage to explore the wreckage of the Titanic. The influencer, whose real name is Jimmy Donaldson, made his comment on Twitter June 25th, three days after an underwater tourist craft operated by Ocean Gate Expeditions imploded 1,600 feet away from the famed shipwreck, killing all five passengers, including the company CEO. Stockton Rush. While Mr. Beast did not know who extended the invitation, he included a screenshot of a text sent to him that read, I am going to the Titanic in a submarine late this month. The team will be stuck to have you along. I am sure you are also welcome to join. Before the pick cuts out, news has reached out to Mr. Beast Red for further comment to Ocean Gate Expedition and has not heard back. Thanks for joining me. I am Joy Dada reporting for MLC TV. joy for the entertainment update and that is the size of our package today if you like what we do do support us by subscribing to our youtube channel malachi tv like and follow our facebook pages mlc tv mlc tv 2 mlc tv yoruba and ebera vabe mlc tv instagram mlc tv 2021 twitter malachi tv and tiktok malachi underscore tv for your events coverage, appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comments, advert placement, or sponsorship. Please call or send SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malakai TV online on weekends to watch our various programs, Saturday 7 p.m. Political Arena, Sundays 6 p.m. Women's World, and Mondays 9 a.m. The Opinion. It is Malakai TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please be your brother's keeper to build a happier and a better society together. I am Jane Gia Balagbubu. Good day and thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.